mid-range. Looks like Cruz is up a game. Yeah, Esper mid-range is one of those very interesting decks. I truly believe that if Esper mid-range draws the right cards in every matchup, it is, has a favorable matchup against the field. One of the difficulties of the deck is it's working on so many different axes that sometimes it can just draw the wrong cards in the wrong matchups and really not come together. Uh, but as we see here for a Blood Baron in, with a Blood Baron in play against a mono black opponent, uh, things are looking pretty good for our Esper mid-range player. Yeah, we take a look at the board state here. A couple cards in the graveyards over there. And Erebos is going to hit the table right now. Actually, a nice trump to the Blood Baron, not allowing it to gain life. Cruz is going to untap. He's got a pretty nice mana base right now. Access to all of his colors. Blood Baron in play. Looks like he has a D-Sphere and some other cards in his hand. Flora has a Mutavolt among those four lands, a Desecration Demon and that Erebos. Now here is a D-Sphere to take care of the Erebos, which will turn the Blood Baron back on. Yeah, so Esper, it has the tools, like I said, to deal with anything. And you see that here. You know, what would normally be a trump, a Blood, you know, Erebos against Blood Baron, it does play Detention Sphere. You see he has a pair of Cyclonic Rifts in his hand, so he kind of has generic yeah. answers to anything Mono Black could put up here. And we've seen a lot of people try this before, and I think your comment is actually pretty dead on. If you draw the right cards in the right matchups, this deck actually looks very impressive. It's when you draw the wrong cards in the wrong matchups, where the, and you obviously have, don't have any control over that really outside of Temples, that's where you get into a lot of trouble. Yeah, I mean, it's a deck that's playing Aetherling and Liev Sky Knight in the same deck. Uh, those cards are really pulling it in different directions. And <laughs> I think that's an understatement. <laughs> right. But, there, but there's, there are Lee of Sky Knight matchups, and there are Aetherling matchups. And if you hit the right cards in the right matchups, you have the tool. You know, you have Aetherling for the control decks. You have Aetherling. You have Whip for the aggro decks. You have Supreme Verdict. You have um, Detention Sphere. You know, for the mid-range decks here, Mono Black, you have Night Veil Spectre. You have Blood Baron. So it's like you have the right cards for every deck. Yeah. It's just if you draw them or not. Right. Floor taking a look here at a hand of a couple copies of Bile Blight. He's going to put the Trigger of Desecration even on the stack. You're going to send to the Red. Zone. Looks like Cruz is more than willing to take that damage, so he's going to go down to seven. The big question here is, does he have a Devour Flush or something to actually control that Blood Baron that's running rampant? And it doesn't look like he does right now. Yeah, he can chump it with Mutavolts, but it's the life gain that's more of a, a threat than the actual damage right now. There's a Knife Veil Spectre before passing the turn back. As you mentioned, he could go on chump duty. Here's a Cyclonic Rift to pick up the Demon. He could also get a little crazy and try to double block with two Mutavolts, but chances of that working out are uh, seem like yeah. pretty slim. So I'm going to go ahead and throw something else at Esper Midrange. I believe, well, this is a thought experiment, but if Preordain was in the format, I feel like Esper Midrange might be the best deck. It would certainly be a very good deck. I, I'm be actually, okay. It would be really good. It, it could really use a card like that. I'm scared to think of what Preordained would do to Revelation decks. Uh, that, that, I, that's, I play, you know, I actually think it'd be scarier out of a deck like Esper Midrange. Revelation, all its cards are about the same. Yeah, I, Revelation decks are all the same, but I mean, the fact that they can actually keep finding Revelations and Jaces and Verdicts and all of that stuff, that's that's the thing that's actually really scary to me. Yeah, all right, now we have a Mythic from Dragon's Maze. This is Reap Intellect being cast. Um, pretty, okay, this is something I have not seen very much. So it's a lo it's a lobotomy for X. So it's going to be for those of you who played with that card. So he's going to look at Dustin Flora's hand, get two different cards from the hand, and then take all copies of that card from hand, graveyard, and deck. So Deso Demon and Bio Blight. Looks like that's going to go. So target opponent reveals his or her hand. You choose up to X non-land cards from it and exile them. For each card exiled this way, search that player's graveyard hand and library for any number of cards with the same name as that card and exile them. So he chose Desecration Demon and he chose Bio Blight. Now, unfortunately for Floor, he had two copies of Bio Blight. So um, Cruz will take the first one, and then when he searches his hand, he'll take the other one and exile that along with the rest of the Desecration Demons and the rest of the Bio Blights. So we haven't seen this card see very much play. This is actually kind of pretty interesting. No, this is the first time I've actually seen this card being played. Damien has two of them in the main deck, so he actually has a commitment to the card. Um, in a way, it's like an additional Thought Seize, I suppose. He doesn't play. He actually doesn't play Thought Seizes in his build. Okay. Um, it gives you some better game, I would think, in mid-range mirrors. That's where I really like this style of card. I mean, it's another. It's a possible another must-counter card against a Revelation deck, but they probably would still counter it. Um, and there are, def I mean, there are definitely situations where they're fine with letting it resolve, too. Right. That's kind of the scary thing. Yeah, I, I think it's good. It, if you want extra points against mid-range, I, I guess I like that card. Sure. I'm not sure it's, my, it's the best card for just mid-range, but it also has applications in other matchups. So uh, at least here it did a good amount of damage. The rest of the draw here for Flora, he's going to fire in with the Spectre, it looks like, because obviously he needs some help as he's being beaten down by this Blood Baron. So Cruz is going to take two. There's a trigger. Let's see what's turned over. It's a copy of Supreme Verdict that Flora cannot cast at this point. And now he's going to fire off this Duress. Oh, 
let's see what the grip is going to be here for Mr. Cruz. As you mentioned, there was a cyclonic roof hanging out. So there's that along with the Bermaz and a knife field specter. So I'll tell you what, his mana is <laughs> The stretched. mana of Esper Midrange. Oh, man. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. The deck is playing the best cards right now. The best cards and hoping just the, the mana works out. But when you have Scry Lands and Dual Lands and coming soon to a standard tournament near you, mana confluence, which we'll talk about. Ooh. I think everything <laughs> can work out just fine. So Cruz is going to take a draw. He's going to attack here with the Blood Baron. This is an attempt. Well, he did get to see in Damien's hand that there wasn't a removal spell, yep. so this is a safe play. Um, granted, Justin still needs to deal with that Night Veil, that Bermaz, which could be pretty difficult for him. But he was able to get Blood Baron off the battlefield, well, at least got, for now. I, I've got some bad news. He's also got a, an Obsidat to deal with if Cruz wants to deploy that. He's actually going to opt to deploy two creatures this turn in the Spectre and the Bermaz. So going to kind of come from two angles. One, he's able to actually take care of the Night Veil Spectre that's on the table. And then two, Bermaz could actually really start to run rampant here on this game. Floor are going to take a draw. He's under world connections. Let's not forget about that hero's downfall that he does have. Like, I guess the question here is, do you want a hero's downfall the Bermaz to keep that in check, or do you go out to the Night Veil Spectre and try to keep coming in? Well, I don't think you can really race the Bermaz here. So my guess is that you go... I, if I was the Mono Black player, I think you go on the Kill Everything plan, which looks like what he's doing. He's going to downfall the Bermaz. If he draws a land next turn, he can start drawing off Underworld connections. But as you said, there's some problems here with not only Obsidat, but a Whip of Erebos in conjunction with Obsidat that yeah. was just drawn, which is going to be pretty difficult for Justin to deal with. Uh, if you're Damien, I think you just stick the whip while you can. You don't want it to get duressed, and that card is so good against mono black. There's a little, yeah, I guess, yeah, because if, if he sticks the whip and then the Erebos, or excuse me, if he sticks the whip of Erebos and then the Obsidat gets thought seized, that doesn't actually matter. Right. So he, He's going to go for the Obsidat first, which, which is more aggressive. It's going to put Justin on a quicker clock. So here is the 5-5. Five five. It's going to blink out after the little drain and gain. And pass the turn back over to Floor, who now has to worry about that. He did pick up the land to start working on Underworld Connections, but that's a really slow gain. You know, this is something where you basically, okay, this is my turn, play this, pass back, hope things actually break my way. And he might be on chump blocking duty this turn once Obsidat does come back. This is going to be another drain and gain here. Yeah, I mean, right, yeah, right now he's down to eight. He can take one hit off the Obsidat. Then I'll put him down to, if he takes a hit here, he'll go down to three and then two once he draws a card off Night Veil's of Underworld Connections, which means he'd have to find a kill spell that turn for Obsidat. Well, he might not even get the block. It doesn't look like he's going to get the block at all, because here's you have Sky Knight. That's going to come into play. The 3-1 Detainer will target the Night Veil Spectre. That means it doesn't get the block. And so now here's an attack for seven. Flora's is going to go down to one. And then Cruz can just blink out Obsidat. Ooh, but it looks like he may have forgotten. Okay, let's resolve this trigger first. Doesn't look like he's forgotten just yet. Yeah, and no need for the Whip of Erebos here. Thanks to Leo Sky Knight. Uh, Damien's able to just to get very aggressive here. And yeah, Dustin, if he's unable to draw an extra card. He's dead when the Obsidat comes back into play. Uh, there shouldn't be an out for him here. Yeah, he takes a draw and he's going to extend the hand. Damien Cruz with Esper midrange. Going to give Mono Black Devotion a loss. His tournament is off to a very nice start here. Yeah, and so Esper midrange, it's always interesting to look at different deck lists of it. When you have Esper, in an Esper midrange shell, there are more, like, if you make a list of all the cards you want to play, there's more cards than you could actually play in a deck. So it's interesting to see what the players decide to play. Uh, Damon actually with no four of creatures in his list. Mm -hmm. He's still kept on Night Veil, Blood Baron, Vermaz, Lee of Sky Knight, but he's actually added Afara to the deck this, for this tournament. Yeah, we've seen some players try that card in this deck. It's not a card that you play a ton of, but, you know, there are a couple copies floating around trying to make that sort of an engine as well. As you did mention right at the top, it's a deck full of just a bunch of good cards and just trying to make it work. Yeah, it looks like he's going for a more late game Esper midrange deck than we may have seen in the past. Sometimes you've seen these decks play cards like Soldier of the Pantheon or some some more aggressive creatures. When you look at what he has, three Blood Barons, two Obsidat, two Afara, one Aetherling. That's a, that's a pretty good, uh, that's like a pretty He's definitely looking to win the late game more so than the early game, especially when you have things like three Cyclonic Rifts. Yeah, it's a it's an interesting take on the deck. Again, we um, we you know we take a look at a card like Reap Intellect, we have Cyclonic Rift, all of that stuff. You know, it's a. Uh